everyone. I thought that while I'm commuting to work and uh, since I have a busy work day ahead I might as well use this opportunity uh, commuting to tell you guys of what I thought about the World Cup so far. Uh, it's not the previous background uh, and I expect to be traveling for at least 20 more minutes if not more. So I think I gotta have I got some time on my hands for that. What do you think about the World Cup so far? I actually think it's very enjoyable. I really uh, feel that there's uh, many good games, many exciting games, which is something I didn't really expect, especially after the Euros, which were all around just boring. Plain boring uh, soccer there. Um, and probably it has to do that there are less of those minnow European teams. Uh, no, less of the minnows. It's just uh, second tier European teams. Uh, that are very well organized uh, but usually play also very defensively because of that and kill off some games and um, you know a little bit more cautious and this was not the case now uh, at this World Cup I there were rarely any really cautious games as far as I can remember I think the most cautious one was probably yesterday Poland against um, Senegal so so far uh, to that so that that's a good thing and also that there was no zero zero no goal less draw so far I think is actually quite exciting uh, yesterday again the average goals went slightly up it's not at the Brazil level where it was just crazy with many uh, lopsided wins this time uh, most games are a lot tighter which makes it also more interesting to watch uh, the other thing I really like is that there are no real minnows except maybe for Panama and even they held on for a good half so uh, that was the second most lopsided loss uh, Saudi Arabia just collapsed but um, again the result was a little bit too high uh, since Russia scored two in extra time and honestly we all know that this extra time was uh, slightly too long um, so and we will see how Saudi Arabia will do today um, I doubt that they will give up that many goals in the next two games uh, as well simply for the reason that they don't want to be all humiliated and for that reason uh, the five nothing win of Russia counts very heavily it's like almost making four points uh, as it's more or less secures qualification already because uh, that goal differential is almost insurmountable and yeah put Egypt under some serious pressure that they succumbed to yesterday uh, I think we can say it like that uh, Uruguay feel, feel, will feel a little bit better about themselves because I think Uruguay will feel confident that they can beat Russia uh, given the discrepancy in star power although never underestimate this Russian team they're a little bit on a roll and that's exactly what uh, you don't want to face that uh, if you face the host nation that the host nation even, even if it's a smaller less team smaller team like Russia um, if they get on a roll that's good for them and I think the draw was super sweet to them again I've heard conspiracy theories I don't pay too much attention to conspiracy theories um, you know luck can happen and if it was then there surely will be an investigation sooner or later so um, so much for that now um, I could go group by group but I want to go back to what I said yesterday which teams actually looked good so far and it's always hard to judge after the first round I remember in 2006 everyone was um, crazy about Argentina that they played so well against the Ivory Coast played very well then against Serbia um, and then the it wasn't as smooth and the team that was considered as the best at the tournament maybe it even was uh, couldn't deliver against Germany so that's always a bad indicator it's, I think the same thing was true uh, 2010 I think which team looked really good I think it was Germany well they made at least the semi-finals uh, 2014 the Dutch looked amazing in the first few games and then you could see the wear and tear so yeah there's always that as well gotta merge here onto the freeway 
it's all traffic jam because of construction where I live but that actually makes it a little bit easier for me to talk actually because it goes quite smoothly um, so there's always a team that looks very well at the beginning of the tournament and then uh, cannot carry it to the end uh, I'd rather have a team slowly warming up maybe show some good performance but uh, slowly warming up uh, I think that usually is a better indicator for a tournament. But yeah, which teams look good? Well, honestly, none really looked flawless, but I think from the style of play um, and overall performance, I think Spain really had the best performance. Uh, they looked well as a team. They um, played a fluid style and they could take control over a game uh, against an opponent that was almost uh, their equal, at least beforehand. Well, and the opponent was their equal because they had a superstar in Ronaldo who uh, tore their defense apart. But uh, how many will be able to exploit it? Yes, the big thing was De Gea's blunder. I think that one cost Spain the victory. Uh, and it's, a, it's to be seen whether De Gea uh, can shake that off. I think a mistake per tournament, uh, per tournament is okay for a great goalkeeper. So maybe he will now uh, have splendid performances and it probably helps that they're playing lesser opponents. I'm also still not sure um, how this coaching change, the last minute, co last minute coaching change is affecting the team. Uh, they might have galvanized now against Portugal because you know it's a, a rival that you can always um, get motivation uh, against but I'm not 100% that this will carry on through the tournament um, also I think the choice of Iero might be a smart one because he has natural authority he is a natural leader he was in his playing days and he might as well uh, be as a coach so that's not too bad but I also think since he is such a Real Madrid icon and half the team is from Barcelona will that have an impact uh, that's to be seen um, again I don't think that the Barcelona Madrid divide within the Spanish team is as big as it used to be but it might still exist and you know they had their barbs over the last few seasons I think Barcelona surely thinks that they're the better team but Real Madrid won three Champions Leagues in a row so there you go uh, of the other favorites France it's not that I totally dislike them but yeah it was a little bit disappointing but again I think France's strengths are not in making the game their strength I think I think are more on the counter-attack and having a solid defense so Playing Australia was not good. I think it will be more interesting to see them play against Peru. I'm wearing, maybe for the last time, my Peru shirt during this World Cup. We'll see. Uh, Peru was another team that actually convinced me in their style of play, but didn't convince me in front of goal. That was the one big disappointment. I think Peru looked actually strong. Should have gotten a result against uh, Denmark. Probably even the win. Uh, but yeah, I think it was nerves simply put nerves and uh, therefore uh, they lost and they have a steep hill to climb if they get a result at least a draw against France I think they're still in contention uh, it would help them also because in that way uh, France still has something to play for the worst thing for Peru would be uh, losing to France I mean that's obvious anyway because if uh, Denmark beats Australia Although I don't count Australia out as well. Uh, they are a hardy team. They are not a great team, but they are uh, solid. They can defend well. And, and as you saw against France, it just takes a lucky punch or so um, to go through. So that's that. Well, I'm also happy that I'm out of the traffic jam. First one for now. Uh, I think there's another one coming ahead, but that's not as working as before. So yeah, Spain and Peru were the ones that from a team point of view played quite well. Uh, of, the f of the favorites, uh, I liked for a little bit how Argentina played, but then I realized how much they rely on Messi. It's like Messi does everything. Uh, Messi tries to beat a team by himself and barely gets any support. 
and their lack of flexibility I mean they were doing the same thing against Iceland all along just because you got a goal early uh, and it worked doesn't mean it will work forever so that was um, a little bit of disappointing uh, thing uh, about Argentina's performance um, Brazil I didn't see too much uh, of the Brazil game to be honest I uh, saw so only the second half really uh, nah. yeah I saw a little bit of the first half and most most of the second half where yeah I missed the be uh, the best time of Brazil uh, lucky lucky me but what I saw then was more or less again pressure on them trying to influence the referee being uh, more concerned with side uh, side scene side I want to say market is not a market but you know not focusing on the game itself but focusing on the sideshow that was what I was looking for uh, with the referee uh, that we should look at VAR here we should look at VAR there I think if you take care uh, of the game and let VAR um, decide when it wants to come in you um, you will be much better off yes Switzerland played tough but we know that Neymar likes to lie on the ground a lot so for that reason um, I don't I think Brazil actually disgraced themselves a little bit in my eyes. Um, Germany, complete disappointment. I'll be very curious to see who's coming out of that group. Uh, they have a big game. I think that's probably with Argentina, Croatia. I think Argentina, Croatia is a one make or break game. Uh, because if Argentina doesn't get a win here, I think they might as well be going out. Um, I really do. I think this is something that Argentina won't be able to shake that easily. Uh, even if they beat Nigeria and then are sitting at five points, well, five points could guarantee you passage through the second round. But I have my doubts. I think this might as well do in uh, Brazil, uh, Argentina's chances. I still think they will win against Croatia, though. Uh, just a gut feeling. Croatia played solid against Nigeria again a game that I didn't see too much uh, I think they won without doing very much but they didn't do mistakes uh, but Croatia's defense well like Argentina's defense is ready to for mistakes anytime yeah that's gonna be an in interesting game uh, I know I'm in the Argentina camp but I feel a little bit because a work colleague of mine he is at least half Croatian I think he's Croatian but he, he has also Austrian citizenship because he grew up here something like that and yeah he looks a little bit nervous at that game although he liked what he saw against Nigeria so yeah I want I really want Argentina to win it all don't get me wrong but you know that group I can live with almost any other team advancing as well I think they are that's one of two groups where almost like every team the other one being group C uh, yes I like France uh, I never had bad experience with the French so I actually studied French for six years don't speak French anymore if you don't do it for now almost 15 years uh, it becomes hard you gotta use it otherwise you lose it but I always had good experience in France so for that reason I always liked the French and you know I, I grew up with this great French team with Zidane uh, that I still adore tunnel coming so it will be a little bit darker uh, and for that reason yeah I still like France and I like what they have talent wise I think the French team is one of the most talented ones if they had a Zidane style player I think they would be prohibitive favorites in this tournament uh, but they don't so that makes it even more interesting Griezmann is not Zidane he's a, a great player but he's not a Zidane um, yeah group E I still think Brazil will make it and I think Switzerland will probably take second place uh, it was a master stroke to get the point against Brazil because that now puts Serbia under pressure another game to watch for and now we are back to group F with Germany they have a true make or break game against Sweden and you couldn't wish for uh, for a more <laughs> how to say it's not pleasant to play Sweden uh, Sweden does what Sweden does. Sweden is solid in defense. They frustrated the Italians 
again a much more talented team the frustrated Dutch which I have a hard time at the moment calling them more talented but at least they have a higher pedigree in the last 40, 30 40 years uh, and this Swedish team uh, has very little talent I mean their biggest talent is Ibrahimovic and actually um, it's good that he's here he's not playing it because I think he would have destroyed the team because he wants Zlatan wants Zlatan uh, to get the ball every time I love Ibrahimovic but I think it's good that he is not playing at the World Cup this team qualified without him and uh, they were really struggling after 2012 to do anything serious with him so that I think speaks volumes uh, and Sweden can frustrate Germany and I think Sweden can get a result against Germany uh, that's the amazing thing if Germany gets rolling early, gets it together, I, we might fear for Sweden. But this is really a very, very tricky game. Now another team that I liked for about 40 minutes is England. I think this England team, if they can play all the way, um, an entire match really well, uh, especially like in the first half this England team is dangerous I think they can even do some damage against Belgium I really believe Belgium is the more experienced team here uh, they have probably the more grizzled veter veterans so in that sense Belgium I think is a sh is pretty much a quarter-final team for this World Cup but England also and I think this young English team there is really something growing uh, I'm actually slowly moving a little bit into the England camp. I mean, they showed me already in Euro 2016. I know this sounds ridiculous, but I liked very much their game against Russia. They played well and they got a very undeserved equalizer. Uh, they beat Wales and then it fell apart. And I don't un I understand why. And yeah, they have a young team and that could be exciting. Uh, maybe this is something like Germany in 2010. I didn't move in Germany's camp back then, uh, but at least it softened me on Germany because they played the nicest uh, football back then, soccer if you like. Um, England is far from playing the best one at the tournament, but yeah, I think England. At the moment I like their chances and I'm gonna regret these words because uh, England does England things very, very often. Um, of course, I feel more confident about Belgium. I really think that that's not a team that's dangerous. I think Roberto Martinez is the coach that they needed two years ago. I think um, that's a dangerous proposition uh, for anyone to play against. And uh, Belgium surely will like their chances uh, going against Senegal or Japan in the second round. And those two look now the teams that are favored to go through in that group. I would neither count out Poland nor Colombia. I think it's well within the reach, to, especially to beat Japan. And also Senegal is not unbeatable. This could be a group that uh, after the next uh, round um, is all... No, nah, it's not possible that they're all on three points. Because Poland will be playing Colombia. So that's a game of last chance and Japan is playing Senegal well if it goes uh, in a draw in both uh, games also not inconceivable uh, we'll see where this one will go so uh, but because of that group being a very interesting group to watch but I don't think that uh, a team from there is likely to make the quarters especially when playing against England or Belgium, I think both of those teams like the chances going forward. Yeah, Germany, let's go back to that, was my, one of my bigger surprises that they really didn't show up. Uh, I know that there's a, there's a curse on European world champions, France, Italy, Spain, all went out in the first round. I just thought never bet against Germany. I think Germany is the one team that always breaks curses. Um, well, maybe not. Uh, and from what I hear about this German team, nothing really comes out, but it doesn't look very comfy for them, to be honest. So, uh, so this is a run through the groups uh, of who I think plays well. Of course, everything can change at any moment. Um, 
but yeah, that's my assessment of the groups. Uh, other things that I observed VAR. I thought they handled it overall well, and it's surprising how little refereeing controversy was there at the World Cup so far. And I think that's a good thing. Yes, maybe in the last few games, uh, yeah, Harry Kane probably should have gotten a penalty, and that penalty was not of Tunisia, was a very soft one. I can see why they give it. Uh, but it was not this. If this happens with a lot of men in the box, this is not a penalty. Uh, I, I, since there was just two, were just two England defenders and the one Tunisian guy, the referee had a very clear view of the, of the proceedings. Um, that's why that penalty was given. Uh, other than that, I don't think there would have been. Uh, Tunisia did some really nice wrestling with Harry Kane, and probably and England probably should have gotten a penalty uh, much as as well, not much earlier. So. Uh, and put the game away. Um, the Swiss goal against Brazil, um, yeah, we can uh, discuss. Yes, it was a push, uh, but again, then the, it's also a little bit of a judgment call, especially since the Brazilians really like to fall these days uh, very well. I think Neymar is doing them a disservice. Speaking of Neymar, um, if you haven't seen, uh, check out on Google Eric Cantona on Neymar, and I'm sure you'll get a great laugh. Uh, look for images uh, made my day yesterday made my day yesterday um, but other than that yeah you can always discuss and it looks a little bit weird that the referees maybe take a more defensive approach uh, in making their decisions they're not going for the big um, yeah let's call this a penalty uh, they let the game roll and uh, let VAR decide and I think that's a good thing it keeps the game flowing is it the best way of how I would have implemented VAR? Probably not. I am still maintaining, and I maintain this for 15 years or more, that I would like a challenge system like in the NFL, um, because I don't want video review to uh, disrupt the game flow too much and give credit where credit is due. FIFA actually manages the game flow is not as interrupted as it could as it could be, and it was often uh, in league games. Uh, this season and also at the Confederations Cup. I think they are handling it quite well and they really came up with this, uh, with a system that seems to work and if that can be instated uh, let's say in Bundesliga, Premier League uh, and so on or in the Champions League even that would be a great thing. Uh, but what I would like is that use a challenge system. A coach can challenge twice a decision by the referee and um, if he wrongly did so he loses one substitution I think that would make a lot of sense to me and uh, would would not have changed the game as much as it's maybe now but again I think the way they do it now is the way that we're going forward so uh, not too many complaints from my part there I think they really showing how it how it should be done Speaking of substitutions, uh, we haven't seen it so far, but I see it coming very soon that uh, there will be late last minute substitutions in order to gain some time, faking injuries and all that kind of stuff. I always maintain that in the last 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, there should be no substitution unless it's for injury. And if a player goes down feigning injury, he needs to be substituted. I think that will take care of all this flopping and rolling around in the last minute uh, almost instantly. I, f I strongly believe so. And uh, that's something I'm gonna watch how referees will be doing. Uh, whether now they are have more leeway even giving more um, extra minutes uh, because of VAR. So, I mean, we see already six, seven minutes being added on. Uh, I hope they do that for that because that's something I fear and it will come it will come. Uh, that's the reason why I like the first few games, usually the World Cup best, because no one is really trying to um, win a game too much with gamesmanship. Yes, in the last minutes or so, there you see a little bit, but it was not rampant. And I really hope it will not get rampant uh, this time around. Uh, but yeah, if I'm bad guy I would say well the Italians are not there so it's not happening but you know the South Americans do the same thing uh, and I cannot believe I'm 
Italy is my favorite team and I'm really good that they're not at the World Cup, something missing there. I truly have to say that um, getting excited for groups G and H was a little bit hard because it seemed like I've seen all the teams that I care for um, um, before, prior to that on, on, on the weekend. Uh, so yes, we saw England, yes, we saw Belgium and they made up for me not being too excited about it and also I excited myself about Group H because I think it's a very open group and yeah, the first game really uh, delivered but yeah, there's something missing there's also something missing color-wise uh, it's not necessary that I miss the blue although uh, yeah, the blue teams are live few and far in between off the top of my head, Iceland I'm sure there's another one. Uh, Uruguay, yeah, France, but you know, they, they play navy blue, but this uh, really nice royal blue is largely missing. Uh, although the Italy shirt this year is also not that great, to be honest. Um, and what else? Yeah, orange is missing. Orange is missing a lot. Uh, and it's not only the Dutch, it's also the Ivory Coast. And yeah, I think the fact that the uh, African teams that usually make some color statements like Ghana or Cameroon, Ivory Coast are not there, definitely makes it color wise not as appealing as the World Cup as it could be. Well, I arrived at work, um, it was a pretty long video, these are just some thoughts and observations that I had. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought about it, uh, whether I should do more of it, maybe I'll do one other like that at the before the third day of group play and yeah I'm gonna be interested to see more games and we get more to know more about the World Cup teams. I will talk to you later and hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.